Hello, good morning and welcome back to Football League World TV where today we are continuing our series of fans voice shows looking ahead to um, various clubs prospects uh, for the 2022-23 EFL season. My name is Toby Wilding and joining me today is Dirk from Blackburn Rovers Seas because today we are now focusing on Blackburn Rovers, a big season of course for them as Jan Dar Thomason takes the club into a new era following the departure of Tony Mowbray at the end of last season. Any Blackburn fans who are watching along, um, please do get in touch via the comments with any thoughts or questions you'd like to put to us. Really do appreciate that interaction. And um, let's get going. Thanks for having me, Toby. Yeah, so as I say, Dirk, with me from Blackburn Rover Seas here. Um, we're going to look ahead to next season in just a minute, but just to uh, quickly recap on what 21-22 brought for Blackburn Rovers, obviously for much of the first half of the campaign, it looked as though the club were well in the mix for a promotion push, potentially automatic, certainly the playoffs, but then a, a run of just four wins from the last 19 games sort of brought an end to that. And eventually it was a, an eighth place finish Rovers had to settle for. Uh, Dirk, what do you think it was that went wrong for Rovers in the second half of the season? Um, well, I, to be honest with you, I think, uh, I think, you know, we could have made a couple more additions in the, in the transfer window. Uh, uh, you know, um, I guess looking, looking, looking back on it now, perhaps the Adam Armstrong money or the Adam Armstrong uh, sale didn't, uh, the money for that was not necessarily assigned for that transfer window. We did bring in, of course, Mac and Day, but of course, straight away within within a heartbeat, he was he was injured, and of course, that provided little uh, little options moving forward. Again, confidence was sapped. Of course, when you get into a run of run of games like that, and the Diaz of twenty twenty one was not the Diaz of twenty twenty two, when this goal was completely dried up. He, of course, picked up an injury as well, was wiped out for a good portion of the game. It was just, it's just another one of those Tony Mowbray sort of runs. Of course, he's been notorious uh, for over the course of his tenure. You know, he's, he did a fantastic job, of course, over the five years. But there was a bit of a groundhog day over the past two or three seasons where we went on a good, a, a good chunk of games where the wins was very small in exchange for a lot of defeats. So uh, it was just, you know, it's Mowbray, you know, uh, and, and fortunately... You know, an eighth place finish at the end as a start of the season, you probably would have taken that. Um, I was last season thinking of, of a more lower, about tenth. So you know, yes, eighth is great, but uh, it does. Uh, it's like a bitter, giant pill to swallow when you are looking good around about Christmas time, and and just the 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 major collapse kind of crushed all our hopes a little bit. And um, um, uh, yeah, and unfortunately, you know, for me. Tony Mowbray probably stayed a season too long. I would have liked to maybe change it up a bit last season before this uh, eighth place finish. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, that we've got a chance to to uh, look uh, look at Blackburn Rovers in a different point of view the, this season. Um, but I do appreciate Tony Mowbray and what he's done, of course, uh, uh, for, for the five years um, and his tenure. So, but yeah, bit of collapse, maybe a bit more strengthening, and um, you know, just change it up. It should have been. Trying to get out of that funk, which has always been um, it's been a difficult thing for Blackburn Rovers under Tony Mowbray. So hopefully we can see a different approach from the touchlines uh, this coming season. Yeah, so with that, that in mind, as you were saying there, obviously Tony Mowbray's contract coming to an end at Blackburn last summer and the club evidently is elected not to um, not to renew that deal. So uh, from what you're saying there, get the impression that that was the right decision for them then in your eyes. Yeah, yeah, it was... Um... I think there was a run run of games uh, the season prior to last. I think we were going 13 or 14 games and without a win. I think either the Millwall, I think either did we beat Millwall? It was a frustrating game against Millwall, and that's when I, I I'd had enough. Um, but of course, nothing was happening. Nothing changed. He remained in the in, in the hot seat. And you know what? I, of course, I backed the manager, backed the team. Um, and yeah, a, a great opening part of the season. But it just got stale again. And 
Um, with the prospect of, of another year, if, if it was another year with Tony Mowbray here, I would have felt the same sort of vibe that we would we would have flashes of brilliance or flashes of of, of uh, excitement, which Mowbray was was prone to do that. He liked exciting football, attacking football. Um, but there's always coming, you know, with every two games of brilliance, there's a couple of stinkers in there. And and, uh, and I didn't want to didn't want that again. I, you know, I, I just felt time, fresh eyes. When you look around the EFL, especially the championship, uh, you do see a lot of clubs going for the younger manager. Uh, and I felt that we needed to jump on that and, and try and find a younger coach. Um, uh, and again, throughout the summer, I've been watching it from all angles, the, the, the crazy Facebook pages, the, the, uh, the BRFCS forum, all the little hot pockets of, of, of communities for Blackburn Rovers and seeing their opinions, seeing the, the, the little uh, the latest links of who we're going to hire. And it went through a roller coaster this 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 summer of who we were going to get, and I think I think we've landed on a on a not the, not the best name that that was banded around early days. Of course, Farker was was heavily linked. Went to Munchen Gladbach, a, cl a club that's close to my heart. Uh, my, my mother's German; she's from that neck of the woods, um, and that would have been great. It would have been fantastic. But you know, I think we've we've landed on a, a credible uh, uh, candidate or kind of a coach. But there is an air of mystery about, you know, we don't know. Nobody knows what we're going to get, even though we've seen a few preseason games. The rest of the EFL haven't got a clue. We haven't got a clue. Could be great. Could be shit. We never know. And that, of course, brings us on nicely to the uh, the new era coming in at Ewood Park now, led by John Gar Thomason, Blackburn Rovers' new head coach. As you say, Dirk, very little to go off at the minute, just a few pre-season games. But from what you have seen in those matches, what, what are the sort of early impressions you're getting of what Blackburn are going to be like under Thomason? Um... I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm happy uh, he heading into the first game of the season. Um, I'm glad that that everybody, you know, from 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 the, the oldest guy on the books to the the youngest guys on the books into the academy, uh, all those fringe players there have all been given a chance to uh, to impress. And a couple of a couple of players have probably done themselves no harm uh, over the past four or five preseason games. And I do anticipate two or three. Uh, maybe even two, two, maybe even four um, players who were who were nowhere near the first team uh, making the push uh, to to at least be on the bench uh, this coming season. Of course, we, I think this season we get five subs to play, so there's a good chance for them youngsters, the Jack Vales, the the Adam Whartons. The, there's a lot of there's a, 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 a lot of youngsters who've made the push and uh, are in the spotlight now and have taken that chance uh, uh, impressively. So I've been impressed with the fact that he's had a chance to do that and he seems to be sticking to uh, a core sort of bunch of players that, you know, that they've taken a chance well. Um, the games themselves have been a mixed bag. You know, we, we had that that weird Accrington Stanley doubleheader, which we won one and lost one with 60 minute outings, which was which was good. Of course, it didn't great, get off great with a with a defeat with pretty much the, the strongest 11. Uh, but the second game uh, uh, with 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 the majority of youngsters, they came and they they, they, they took a win as well. So, yep, been been great. A uh, 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 steady eddy sort of preseason. We met an old old uh, gaffer in uh, Gary Bowyer up at Dundee, and then we took on the Giants of Scotland, and we gave him a game. Um, and yeah, and I think it's been it's been good. There's been no major moral sapping or morale crushing defeats. I think it's been it's been good. Uh, some players have scored goals. Jack Vale standing up, of course, uh, being accounted for. Gallagher's looked refreshed. Uh, Toad Dona looks like he's put on a, a bit of muscle. So it's it's all looking good in right areas. The only probably weakness I'd say uh, is is probably our our centre backs, which hopefully we could strengthen. It probably won't happen this week, uh, but maybe next week or, or the week after. But um, no, it's uh, I'm excited. Fresh eyes, fresh personality from the touchline is great. You know, I, I'm I probably you the, the majority of us sick of Tony Moby sitting there with his cup of tea and his Dunkin' his donuts watching from the side. We got a fresh uh, baby face Danish assassin, of course, on the sidelines, and he's uh, he's saying the right words at the right time, and he's given me uh, a nice, good feeling. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. I do know we we should expect and give uh, the, the gaffer a new a year of grace. Um, hopefully, a positive year of grace, and not one that's towards the doldrums but I'm excited yeah you mentioned there about those many young players who've been given those opportunities in pre-season part of that is perhaps down to a, a lack of options um with other transfers that have yet to materialize and that is what we are going to focus on next
So, as I say there, uh, quiet summer in the transfer window, certainly in terms of incomings at Blackburn uh, so far. Just the one new first team signing from the looks of things, uh, with all due respects to Ethan Walker, that is uh, Callum Britton coming in to fill the right back void left by Ryan Nyambe uh, following his departure to Wigan. Britton, of course, coming in on a four year deal for an undisclosed fee from Barnsley. Uh, Dirk, is that a signing uh, that you like the look of? Yeah, one hundred percent. It's it was uh, 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 upsetting to say the least to see that Naomi leaving. I thought I thought there might have been a little bit of hope, a little bit of um, uh, possibility that he could have signed on. And I think, um, in all honesty, he agent or his agent or whatever they probably handled that end of the season contract probably a bit messy, and he's he's not really landed where he really wanted to. So, um, you know, and that that goes to show to any potential people listening out there the grass is not always greener um wherever you know um if you walk over you know considering other options you may end up uh, a worse place than you started so uh, but for me britain fantastic signing a player that uh, that tony mowbray has been keeping an eye on for a few a few years now uh, at least uh, and one that uh, stood out a couple of times when uh, barnsley were flying under valerian ishmael uh, one of maybe four or five candidates from that barnsley team maybe it's actually there was quite a good low uh, low echelon players that really stood out uh, under that era, and he was and he was one of them. Um, and again, fantastic way to 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 harsh any critics out there. Of course, maybe people are uh, complaining about money, money being spent, but of course, within within a couple of minutes, coming on, uh, providing assist to Dak uh, and to win the game as well uh, for uh, in the friendly the other the other day against Lincoln City. Great, great start. Um, but yeah, I've got no qualms about that. It was an area that was. That was a, a, a big question mark. Nyambe would would have been the guy, um, and then when you when you lose him, who was left? We we had a we had a, a young Irish guy, James Brown, who's not really ready, I don't think, for the championship. And there's also uh, a bit of a utility player, Joe Rankiestello, who would have probably fit fit in that slot as well. A guy who is is a walking question mark anyway. You know, you don't know which where his his actual spot is. Um, and I don't think I don't think he wants to be right back. I, I think he, he would rather be further forward. But, you know, I'd rather have a, an out and out right back, right and right, out and out right wing back. And um, uh, for me, Callum Britton w- was one of the best, uh, at least top top five, top six um, right backs in the league. Uh, I know last season wasn't the best. Of course, relegation doesn't do well. But, you know, when you look at that team now, a lot of um, the key players have left. Mao has left. Uh, who else has left? A couple of the, the forwards have left as well. So there they are. The, the vultures are circling and maybe Rovers will circulate around uh, Oka one more time uh, and, and maybe uh, nick a couple more from them. But uh, no, I'm happy with the signing. Great, great bit of business. It does go to show um, that we have got money to spend um, and hopefully it's, it is a first of a few. We are still probably light in, in a number of areas. And um, I think uh, the right back one. Um, it, it is it's satisfied and hopefully with a utility man wrecking so maybe Hayden Carter could operate uh, in Britain's absence should any suspensions or any injuries come up over the season but I'm I'm, I'm very happy with his uh, arrival yeah and as you say there what one of those other areas that certainly looks to need strengthening is centre-back uh, Daryl Ennihan obviously moved on after the end of his contract, he now finds himself at, at Middlesbrough. And Jan Paul Van Hecker, of course, uh, player of the season for his on loan from Brighton uh, last year. He, of course, now back at his parent club for the time being. So um, who who would you like to sort of see come in and uh, take those sorts of slots in the Rovers side, considering, you know, the likes of Anil Abnahodzik and uh, Penn Davis have already been linked but gone elsewhere? Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, so yeah, we 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 were linked with two credible credible names, and there was maybe a little bit of uh, hope that we would snap them up. And either either one of them, the Bosnian lad there who did uh, join Sheffield United, of course, former former JDT uh, employee, I guess, or, or player under the in, under the Malmo era, uh, it made sense. It looked like it was going to happen. And I might have got a little bit confident that we were going to make it happen, but it, it fell through, uh, or it just didn't work out in the end. Davis as well. Hasn't really got, didn't really get a game, or didn't get really, didn't really get a look in at Liverpool. But again, he was brought in there for um, to uh, to plug a hole, I guess, in in their in their squad depth. But it, both of them would have been fantastic. But right now, the the player on everybody's lips uh, in the community is trying to instigate a return for John Paul Van Heck, whether it is another loan or maybe maybe there is some some uh, an extra couple of 
couple of dollars or pounds hidden under the cushions at Ewa Park that we might be able to make some sort of permanent deal. That's what the fans are talking about right now. I see it across the across the platforms, um, and that would be that would be a signing that would that would that would actually give a big of a boost to the to the to the doubters out there. He was Player of the Year last season. I know Daryl Allen get a lot of the plaudits, of course, being captain and of course making it to various um, uh, um, sporting sites uh, teams of the team of the season but for, within the rovers fan base within the rovers community the man that was voted player of the year was john paul van heck and hopefully there has been a little bit of uh, what i've been reading anyway hope and and possibility that another loan or another move or a return to ewood park is not out of the question i'm not saying it is a, it is a it is likely but that's the name that that, that i think we we should be pushing for and again, I think keeping. I know, I know. I already I wrote him off. I wrote him off uh, a while back. But on his day, and if we can get maybe two thirds of the season, Ayala is a decent, decent defender. He's a strong guy at the back, tall, jog, juggernaut of a man, and he is an A grade centre back when he stays fit. The problem is, is that he he can open up a bag of crisps and he'll be injured. So we got to kind of keep him fit, keep him healthy. And then use the Whartons, use Carter as well. I think there's, there's, there's a starting back three if we want to go there with that. But bringing in a, a, a player, Van Heck, especially if we, could, if we could somehow make it a permanent deal, would be would be one of the signings of the season, especially in the championship for me. Yeah, and you sort of mentioned him there, Hay Hayden Carter. He's one who you feel has a really big season coming up. Obviously, he's had two outstanding loan spells in League One in the second halves of each of the last two seasons with Burton and Portsmouth. And that, that was something I wanted to ask you on. So if, if Rovers do get out and say get two new centre-backs to take over from Lennyhan and Van Heck, what, what would you like to see happen with Carter and other loan or keep him around and see if he can push those players for a place in the eleven? No, he's got he's got to stay. He's earned his spurs, I think, now in League One. He's he's of a of a good age. Um I want I wanna I wanna see and you know I, I can't I wouldn't guarantee him a starting spot, but I'd put him in the mix. I put him definitely. Uh, he, he's, his name's going to be on the sheet in the substitution role at the very uh, worst case scenario. I think he's capable and he's versatile as well at the back. He can play centre back. He can play right right back as well. So um, yeah, he's got to stay. He's got to fight. I think this is a make or break season for him as well. We've seen uh, a few players recently who were just not good enough. I think Tyler Maglory looks like he's toast. I think he's going to be going back out on loan. And at his age, I think he needs to be um, uh, pushing for a regular spot. But I think Carter did better last season. He stood out. A lot of Pompey fans wanted to make that deal permanent. Scored a bit of a zinger as well of a goal. So, no, uh, no, he's going to stay. He's going to fight, and um, and I wouldn't be surprised if he he actually was a regular this season for Rovers in one shape or another. Yeah, that that certainly be uh, good to see. Obviously, with the uh, the form that Rovers have had uh, in terms of bringing through academy players to the first team in recent years, Carter would be great to see as an, another one continuing that run. Uh, as as we sort of touched on, just the one first team signing as yet for Rovers. It could potentially have been more. Um, reports that a deal uh, to bring in Tyler Morton on, on loan from Liverpool has been agreed, but currently being held up by injuries in uh, Jurgen Klopp's uh, Liverpool squad. If it does happen, is that a good signing for you, Morton? Yeah, yeah, I did have to do a little bit more research on him the, the other day, but uh, the guy has played uh, at a young level already for uh, Klopp's Liverpool, and we're not just talking Calabata Cup action, we're talking Premier League, he's played a few couple of games for them. Uh, he's sought, uh, very highly sought or thought of by Klopp, uh, and it appears that he has a future at, at Anfield. Um, yeah, we've had a we've had a good, well, I've had a mixed bag of success with the loans over the past couple of seasons with Liverpool. Of course, um, Harvey Elliott was fantastic. Unfortunately, it was a COVID year where the majority of us didn't get to see him at, at the ground. But um, and then last season, local lad. Uh, Lane Clarkson came, but uh, did he only had a, a couple of really standout moments, but uh, it, it, it didn't really work out for him. So hopefully we'll get more of the Elliot than we do of the Clarkson, and perhaps he could be uh, the James Garner for our midfield. Of course, uh, Forrest taking on a Man United youngster last so well, past couple of seasons, I think, uh, and and uh, ultimately now led them to promotion. So hopefully we can we can see we can get the best out of him. Uh, I, I believe it will be a tough season for Morton. Of course, the championship is no, not an easy league. Um, and But having him uh, in a midfield uh, alongside Travis or Buckley or whatever, however we're going to shape out, I think, it, you know, we just need the numbers right now. And, and, and 
you know, if you wanted to put put on a shirt, I'd say, well, sign Toby. Let's get him in. Um, we'll stick you at uh, at uh, I don't know, extra goalkeeper. I don't know, but you know, I just want. I do need. We do need depth. We are lucky that we've got an academy of of some young raw talent. Um, but that raw talent, I don't think it's gonna it's gonna uh, define us. We do need uh, some patches of, of of experience. When you, I think I, I looked recently. Uh, Dax, our oldest outfield player, I think, on the books. And then there's a bit of a gap as well. So we do need some of those 26, 27-year-olds who have been there, seen it and done it. But Morton, the young gun, I think will will, uh, will do great. Also, you know, um, yeah, there, there, there's the potential that uh, I think where today is a day, is a big day, and you might not know it's a big day, but Malmo are in the Champions League and they're, on, they're coming to a second leg, losing. If they crash out, they're out. And the, the, the options... Uh, are likely to increase that uh, we might be able to steal a couple of his old buddies from Malmo. So, and there's a there's a Serbian fella out there that's that's been softly linked with Rovers, um, and he also plays more in an attacking midfield. So um, uh, that could be something that might develop if they crash out. And I don't want to wish defeat on anybody, but I hope they lose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, first off, as, as much as I would love to pull on a, a shirt at Ewood Park and step out onto that pitch, there are way too many academy players that have been much better options than me. And, and sort of touching on that there, you know, we, we've seen the likes of Jake Garrett and, and Adam Wharton uh, come to the fore for the first team in, in pre-season. Uh, based on that, if, if with the likes of Rothwell, Bradley Johnson and Jacob Davenport, who have departed, Given what you've seen from from the likes of Garrett and Walton, would you be ready to use them players al alongside Morton to fill those uh, midfield voids, or would you like to see potentially a, a, a second midfield signing to follow on, follow up Morton if he does arrive? Um, I, I don't think they've done themselves any harm. Garrett and Walton have, have uh, been a couple of standouts uh, of during preseason. Uh, I do believe they'll be playing EFL action one way or another, and that's that's the that's the takeaway here. If they can get loans, and I'm sure they're not going to be short of options, whether it is in League One, um, I think uh, you know it's going to be. That's where that's where uh, the, the the Greg Broughtons in the world will earn their money is what is, is to deciding what to do with them. You know they've they they've shown that they can be uh, they can play at the championship level i think i don't know if they could be regulars but they could definitely play some games and definitely be of an influence and and um uh i'm just lucky that we have them uh it might be next season will be probably the season that they'll be pushing regular but yeah one way or another they'll be playing somewhere um but uh, i i don't know i don't know they it, i think garrett's looked looked quite feisty we do need a bit of bite in in that midfield, along you know if if Travis will likely get suspended at some point. So um, yeah, it's it's a it's a conundrum. It's a is a is a, a complicated conundrum, and there's a couple of them like that. Jack Mail as well has scored goals and looked good, and and um, you know I know he was he went, I think he went out alone last season to a to a uh, it might have been Scar uh, the one who got relegated Scunthorpe I think, but he was also flying in the Premier League too. But he's looked like a breath of fresh air. A lot of these guys have really taken their chance here under this new set of eyes, and it's it's puzzling. And and you you, you like me heading into this this coming Saturday, we really don't have a clue. We have no idea what the eleven's going to be, what the what the what the likelihood is of these youngsters featuring. I do think they'll feature in the first few games. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I think they'll feature because the loan window, the transfer window, is is wide open until I think end of August or something like that. But uh, they have a, they have probably three or four weeks. To prove themselves to either be, you know what, you, you're gonna you're gonna stay, or you know what, let's push you down another league and, and you you earn your Spurs like like Carter did last season. Yeah, and uh, that League Cup first round against Hartlepool, you know, the chance to play against lower league opposition there could certainly be telling in terms of that decision. Uh, and now we're going to move on to the uh, the elephant in the room that we really have to touch on at, at some point here. That is, of course. Ben Brereton Diaz being the subject of so much uh, speculation. Uh, a list of clubs as long as an arm uh, linked with him already. And of course, the issue of the contract into the final uh, 12 months of that deal now, which of course means this could well be Blackburn's uh, last chance to receive a fee for him. So, Dirk, if Ben Brereton Diaz isn't going to sign, a new contract would you prefer to sell now and get some funds in for him that could potentially change the face of the transfer window or do you hope he can have um another season like the first half of the last one and potentially set that risk of losing him for a free next summer yeah it is um 
If you could guarantee me the 20 odd goals, uh, 25 goals spread out over the year, I, I don't know. It is it's quite a, can I, another little a puzzler. But realistically, I think if we are setting our sights for playoffs or promotion, I think under a new era, I think we are uh, we we could be in cloud cuckoo now. I think we got to we got to be realistic realists here and just sell. We've got to sell. Maybe even use them as a make weight for uh, another deal. I know I, I saw some people with some calculations and all this kind of stuff that maybe brought. I, there is, there is, of course, the football transfer window seems to operate on a domino effect. Uh, and I did see a link with uh, Brighton's Neil Mope uh, to go elsewhere, a striker, of course, from from their books, which would leave them light on numbers. Perhaps there is a, there's a move there for him to Brighton and maybe we could do some sort of deal with Van Heck the other way. I don't know. I think I don't want to get bitten by the bug that we got um, uh, a preview, or this season, in fact, this, this summer, losing three established first-team players would probably would have generated around about 10 million in combined sales if we had uh, done our homework right and done our contract negotiations right i, th I think um i think uh, that's what another thing moving back to the britain deal the fact that he signed such a huge deal gives us at least two years uh with him uh before we can either renew his contract or then start to maybe you know if he's if he's kicked on further we could sell him with two years remaining and not be mugged off or cleaned out um by by suitors and that's the thing here for me i think we've got to sell diaz um and again I, I don't think the sale of Diaz will, it may enhance our transfer kitty a little bit, but I think the logic now is we sell him now and that money will be kept aside or a portion of it will be kept aside for future transfer winners, not necessarily this one. I think this season we are kind of using some of the money for the Armstrong. That's my that's my understanding anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, he will provide goals. Um, I don't know. Maybe the maybe maybe there's a deal out there <laughs> that we could we could sell them and loan them back. Um, that would be my ideal. Uh, you know, if we could uh, sell them to, uh, uh, you know, there was early doors in the transfer window. Spurs were linked. You know, that that kind of deal. If if that could be orchestrated, that would that would be the dream scenario. Sell them and and, and loan them back. Um, but um, it is it is a without him in the side. That's the question. Who will score the goals? Gallagher's looked lively in in the summer. Um, and a lot of folks are getting behind him now, thinking it'll be his breakthrough year. And maybe Jack Bale will actually um, uh, get in amongst the goals this season. So it is a monstrous conundrum. I do think, well, regardless if he stays or goes, we do need another striker. I think last season, again, using Mowbray's uh, uh, cheat sheet of uh, recruits, Reese Healy was was one from Toulouse uh, who was scoring goals for fun. Of course, we would uh, uh, kind of sideways, uh, side, like sidestep any uh, Brexit sort of rules because he's a, a British lad. Um, but of course, the problem in that one, they just got promoted to the top flight of France. So I don't know if that's going to going to pan out. But uh, either way, we knew we do. I think we need another striker, and, and uh, of course, that need will amplify if Diaz does go. Yeah, that's uh, some answer my next question. There, obviously, no striker has come in um, since the departure of Adam Armstrong last summer, and uh, as you say, that really did look to uh, Pike Rovers. Um, on, on the back of it uh, during the second half of last season uh, when Verton lost his form and uh, his fitness for a time. So that's the, uh, the transfer window covered. Let's now turn our attention to matters on the pitch. Yeah, so looking ahead to um, the start of the season, uh, Rovers, of course, kicking off the campaign on Saturday at Ewood Park against QPR, another team under new management in Michael Beale. Then there's a trip to Swansea, uh, followed by the visit of West Brom. Uh, then back-to-back -back away games at Reading and Sheffield United before sort of rounding off the opening month at home to Stoke City. What do you make of that as a start for Jan Dahl Thomason? I think it's uh it's it's positive, positive start. There's there's definitely winnable games in in amongst all that. Um uh I'm glad that we do kick off at home. Um and again under a, a, a manager that's gonna be trying to set the tone for the season. Uh th yeah, there's, there's definitely winnable games. If I had to pick um how many points out of all that, I think we I think I'm gonna be boring. They're straight down the middle with nine. I think we can we I think uh Looking at those teams, West Brom are going to be tough, especially at Ewood Park. We might we might only muster a draw out of that one if 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 we can again. Yeah, it all depends on how how we start. If we can, if we could pick up two wins out of the first two games, which will be tough going to Wales, uh, that might give us momentum heading into the the back stretch of that. And maybe maybe the the Sheffield United is probably the highlight of that game there, the away game because because we have been in a bit of a tussle with them 
this season for a couple of signings and they've come out on tops uh, for the, for the, for both of them at least. So maybe we'll go there with a bit of, with a bit of sting in our tails and, and, and uh, cause a bit of an upset, but all in all, yeah, I look at that. I look at the, 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 the games that are highly winnable. I think again, I don't, I don't want to be a jinx, but I think last season we, we, we broke a hoodoo, which was, was winning on the opening day. And that set the tone a little bit for, for the rest of the season. If we can kick off against QPR with a win, um, I think we could we could be in for a positive August and maybe even a, a, a lukewarm uh, September, um, and then just just give John Dal Thomason the confidence that he's made the right choice. Give this some of these young guns uh, the chance to uh, to impress, and also give them the belief that they belong in the championship. And then uh, and then that might also uh, provide a bit of optimism in the transfer market. Of course, with the the window still open as we go into those middle of the middle of the pack games there, so. Get off to a couple of good good starts, good performances, uh, could actually set us up for a really good good season. And, and, and for me, yeah, I'm uh, I'm very optimistic um, with a new set of eyes on Rovers this season. Yeah, it seems seems you're not the only one uh, with a bit of optimism for Rovers. Wayne Walden uh, got in touch here. He's a Fulham fan, but he is uh, tipping Blackburn uh, for the playoffs this season. Wayne, thanks for your comment. Uh, Dirk, just just on on that. Uh, other playoffs, uh, something that Yandar Thomason should be targeting straight away this season, or is it is it more of a consolidatory campaign for him? Um, well, yeah, yeah, I, I'd say for him, he should he should just you know uh, approach it one game at a time, just go for it one game at a time. Maybe you know have a little you know uh, a little chat between your 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 head co- your assistant coach there, and just maybe yeah, let's try and aim for a top half of the season. We'll reevaluate maybe after six six or eight weeks or whatever, and, and then of course. Uh, try and push a stretch all the way through to Christmas, and then gauge where we are and and who who is who is left. Do we have any major injuries? We have been synonymous for um for for losing key players. Ayala f- forever forever knocked out. Dak, of course, can this be? You know, two three years ago, he was. I was so worried that we would lose Dak. You know, because he was such a fantastic player. He need, this is his season as well. He needs, I think, he needs a breakout season to remind the championship of what kind of player he is. He ain't getting any younger. Uh, I hope, I hope he has a cracking season. Um, I hope, but I also hope that he doesn't have such a good season that he that he also leaves us. I, I, I he's he's become a key part of of the crew, whether he is playing or not. Um, his uh, camaraderie, his uh, his uh, his know how, his gr- grit is what uh, can be the difference between a, a win and a loss. So keeping him in the team, and again, if Diaz does go, a lot more focus will be pushed on to, to Dak again. And honestly, we don't even know if he's actually going to play. Uh, it is so uh, mind-boggling uh, with, with with being, not brainwashed, but of course being under the same sort of uh, uh, mentorship for five years. Um, it's a good chance for everybody to get a, a fresh fresh look. Um, and yeah, it's going to be all, hopefully all revealed this coming Saturday. Yeah, Bradley Dak can be an absolutely fascinating one. First time uh, in quite some time that he is going into a season fit and available to feature in the opening months. Uh, really going to make that an interesting subplot. Uh, just quickly then, Dirk, uh, on the back of all that, what what is your prediction uh, for a final finish for Rovers this season? Yeah, uh, I haven't really ventured too too high up over the past couple of seasons, so I'm going to go pretty much the same as well. I'm just going to go. I'm going to go 12, 12 for Rovers, I think. Uh, and to be honest with you, I, I wouldn't mind a, a season of 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 just steady eddiness. I don't want to be the, towards the bottom. I don't want uh, uh, John Dal Thomason to have a rough season, first season that make him regret what he's done. I want him to 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 be able to use this season as a as a sort of blueprint for next season. Um, but on the flip side, you know, we have seen in other campaigns from other coaches who, who are new and new to the scene and they explode. They explode onto the scene and they, they make a, 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 a right good go of it. So, yeah, I'm in the middle of that. You know, I, I would I would take a 12th. Um, but if we were to do a Valerie Ishmael and just explode in the league, um, then, uh, yeah, sign me up, sign me up. But realistically, I'm, I'm going to say, if I'm at to put everything on the line, I'd say we finished 12th.
Well, that is uh, all, all we've got time for this, this morning. Uh, Dirk, many thanks to you for um, joining me uh, to talk all things Rovers. Really is uh, fascinating to get your thoughts. Could certainly have uh, gone on for a bit longer if, if that had been possible. Um, uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you as well have enjoyed it at home. If you have, please do um, give us a like and subscribe wherever you're watching. It really does help us get the uh, get the brand out there. And there is, of course, plenty more uh, to come on FLW TV in our Fans Voice series today. At 12 o'clock, Ned Holmes is joined by Lewis Browning to look ahead to uh, Gillingham, who, of course, back in League Two after relegation from League One last season. At two o'clock, um, Liam Russell is with Sam Rourke to look ahead to uh, Sheffield Wednesday uh, and whether or not they can make another promotion push in League One in the coming campaign. And then rounding off at seven o'clock this evening, Alfie Burns joined by Zeke Daniels to look ahead to Norwich City as they return to the Championship after a spell in the Premier League last season. All that remains for me to do is say thanks again for watching and we'll see you again very soon.